Hi, my name is Pia, and I'm going to be reading The Zeitgeist Movement Defined. The Zeitgeist Movement Defined, Realizing a New Train of Thought. Quote, the tremendous and still accelerating development of science and technology has not been accompanied by an equal development in social, economic, and political patterns. We are now only beginning to explore the potentialities which it offers for developments in our culture outside technology, particularly in the social, political, and economic fields. It is safe to predict that such social inventions as modern type capitalism, fascism, and communism will be regarded as primitive experiments directed toward the adjustment of modern society to modern technology." End quote, Dr. Ralph Linton. The Zeitgeist Movement Defined is a first edition, January 2014, is a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial share-alike 4.0. The content in this text may be produced only for non-commercial purposes and may not be resold in any form. Any other interests require direct approval by TZM Global. This is a 100% non-profit text. Any price paid is only for the physical publishing. Any exploitation of this work for profit will not be tolerated. The material authored here is a product of many forms of contribution, specifically the research of the Zeitgeist Movement's expanding lecture team. While not all figures relevant could be credited below, an enormous thanks extends to all others not listed who have contributed news, sources, tips, and other research. Compiled and edited by Ben McLeish, Matt Berkowitz, and Peter Joseph. Thanks to Andres Delgado, Bakari Pace, Brandon Christie, Brandy Hume, Douglas Mallet, Eva Omori, Federico Pistono, Gilbert Ismael, James Phillips, Jason Lord, Jen Wilding, Miguel Oliveira, Charlene Bazegi, and Tom Williams. If you would like to help in translating this text, please contact TZM's linguistics team linguisticsteam at gmail.com. Preface. Quote, the outcome of any serious research can only be to make two questions grow where only one grew before. End quote. Thorsten Veblen. Origin of the name. The Zeitgeist Movement, or TZM, is the identifier for the social movement described in the following essays. The name has no relevant historical reference to anything culturally specific and is not to be confused or associated with anything else known before with a similar title. Rather, the title is based upon the semantic meaning of the very terms explicitly. The term Zeitgeist is defined as the general intellectual, moral, and cultural climate of an era. The term movement simply implies motion or change. Therefore, the Zeitgeist Movement is an organization that urges change in the dominant intellectual, moral, and cultural climate of the time. Document Structure The following text has been prepared to be as concise and yet comprehensive as possible. In form, it is a series of essays ordered by subject in a manner that works to support a broader context. While each essay is designed to be taken on its own merit in evaluation, the true context resides in how each issue works to support a larger train of thought with respect to the most efficient organization of human society. It will be noticed by those who read through these essays in a linear fashion that a fair amount of overlap exists with certain ideas or subjects. This is deliberate as such repetition and emphasis is considered helpful given how foreign some of the concepts might seem to those with no prior exposure to such material. Also, since only so much detail can be afforded to maintain comprehension given the gravity of each subject and how they interrelate, great effort has been made to source relevant third-party research throughout each essay via footnotes allowing the reader to follow through with further study as the interests arises. I will not be reading the footnotes, however there is important and relevant information in them and I urge you to pause the video if you want to read them or download the text. 
which is available free online at the zeitgeistmovement.com. The Organism of Knowledge As with any form of presented research, we are dealing with serially generated data composites. Observation, its assessment, documentation, and integration with other knowledge, existing or pending, is the manner by which all distinguishable ideas come to evolve. This continuum is important to understand with respect to the way we think about what we believe and why, for information is always separate in its merit from the person or institution communicating or representing. Information can only be evaluated correctly through a systematic process of comparison to other physically verifiable evidence as to its proof or lack thereof. Likewise, this continuum also implies that there can be no empirical origin of ideas. From an epistemological perspective, knowledge is mostly culminated, processed, and expanded through communication amongst our species. The individual with his or her inherently different life experience and propensities serves as a custom processing filter by which a given idea can be morphed. Collectively, we individuals comprise what could be called a group mind which is the larger order social processor by which the efforts of individuals ideally coalesce. The traditional method of data transfer through literature sharing books from generation to generation has been a notable path of this group mind interaction, for example. Isaac Newton perhaps put this reality best with the statement, if I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. This is brought up here in order to focus the reader on the critical consideration of data, not a supposed source, as there actually is no such thing in an empirical sense. It is only in the temporal traditional patterns of culture, such as with literary credits in a textbook for future research reference, is such a recognition technically relevant. There is no statement more erroneous than the declaration that this is my idea. Such notions are byproducts of a material culture that has been reinforced in seeking physical rewards, usually via money, in exchange for the illusion of their proprietary creations. Very often, an ego association is culminated as well where an individual claims prestige about their credit for an idea or invention. Yet that is not to exclude gratitude and respect for those figures or institutions that have shown dedication and perseverance towards the expansion of knowledge itself, nor to diminish the necessity of importance of those who have achieved a skill, specialized, expert status in a particular field. The contributions of brilliant thinkers and engineers such as R. Buckminster Fuller, Jacques Fresco, Jeremy Rifkin, Ray Kurzweil, Robert Sapolsky, Thorsten Veblen, Richard Wilkinson, James Gilligan, Carl Sagan, Nikola Tesla, Stephen Hawking, and many, many more researchers past and present are quoted and sourced in this text and serve as part of the larger data composite you are about to read. Great gratitude is also expressed here towards all dedicated minds that are working to contribute to an improving world. That understood, the Zeitgeist Movement claims no origination of any idea it promotes and is best categorized as an activist educational institution that works to amplify a context upon which existing emerging scientific findings may find a concerted social imperative. Part 1, Introduction, Overview. Quote, Neither the great political and financial power structures of the world, nor the specialization-blinded professionals, nor the population in general realize that it is now highly feasible to take care of everybody on earth at a higher standard of living than any have ever known. It no longer has to be you or me. Selfishness is unnecessary and henceforth unrationalizable as mandated by survival. War is obsolete. End quote. R. Buckminster Fuller. About. Founded in 2008, 
The Zeitgeist Movement is a sustainability advocacy group that operates through a network of regional chapters, project teams, public events, media expressions, and charity operations. TZM's activism is explicitly based on nonviolent methods of communication, with the core focus on educating the public about the true root sources of many common personal, social, and ecological problems today coupled with the vast problem of solving and humanity improving potential science and technology has now enabled, but yet goes unapplied due to barriers inherent in the current established social system. While the term activism is correct by its exact meaning, TZM's awareness work should not be misconstrued as relating to culturally common, traditional activist protest actions such as we have seen historically. Rather, TZM expresses itself through targeted rational educational projects that work not to impose, dictate, or blindly persuade, but to set in motion a train of thought that is logically self-realizing when the causal considerations of sustainability and public health are referenced from a scientific perspective. However, TZM's pursuit is still very similar to traditional civil rights movements of the past, in that the observations reveal the truly unnecessary oppression inherent in our current social order, which structurally and sociologically restricts human well-being and potential for the vast majority of the world's population, not to mention stifles broad improvement in general due to its established methods. For instance, the current social model, while perpetuating enormous levels of corrosive economic inefficiency in general, as will be described in further essays, also intrinsically supports one economic group or class of people over another, perpetuating technically unnecessary imbalance and high relative deprivation. This could be called economic bigotry in its effect, and it is no less insidious than discrimination rooted in gender, ethnicity, religion, creed, or the like. However, this inherent bigotry is really only a part of a larger condition that could be termed structural violence, illuminating a broad spectrum of built-in suffering, inhumanity, and deprivation that is simply accepted as normality today by an uninformed majority. This context of violence stretches much farther and deeper than many tend to consider. The scope of how our socioeconomic system unnecessarily diminishes our public health and inhibits our progress today can only be recognized clearly when we take a more detached technical or scientific perspective of social affairs, bypassing our traditional, often blinding familiarities. The relative nature of our awareness often falls victim to assumptions of perceived normality, where say the ongoing deprivation and poverty of over three billion people might be seen as a natural, inalterable social state to those who are not aware of, for example, the amount of food actually produced in the world, where it goes, how it is wasted, or the technical nature of efficient and abundant food production possibilities in the modern day. This unseen violence can be extended to cultural memes as well, where social traditions and their psychology can, without direct malicious intent, create resulting consequences that are damaging to a human being. For instance, there are religious cultures in the world that opt out of any form of common medical treatment. While many might argue the moral or ethical parameters of what it means for a child in such a culture to die of a common illness that could have been resolved if modern scientific applications were allowed, we can at least agree that the death of such a child is really being caused not by the disease at that point, but by the sociological condition that disallowed the application of the solution. As a broader example, a great deal of social study has now been done on the subject of social inequality and its effects on public health. As will be discussed more so in further essays, there is a vast array of physical and mental health problems that appear to be born out of this condition, including propensities towards physical violence, heart disease, depression, educational deficiency, and many, many other detriments that have a truly social consequence which can affect us all. The bottom line here is that when we step back and consider newly realized understandings of causality that are clearly having a negative effect on the human condition, but go unabated unnecessarily due to the pre-existing traditions established by culture, 
we inevitably end up in the context of civil rights and hence social sustainability. This new civil rights movement is about the sharing of human knowledge and our technical ability to not only solve problems, but to facilitate a scientifically derived social system that actually optimizes our potential and well-being. Anything less will create unnecessary imbalance and social destabilization and constitute what could be considered a hidden form of oppression. So returning to the broad point, TZM works not only to create awareness of such problems and their true root causes, and hence logic for resolution, it also works to express the incredible potential we have, beyond such direct problem solving, to greatly improve the human condition in general, solving problems which, in fact, have not yet even been realized. This is initiated by embracing the very nature of scientific reasoning, where the establishment of a near empirical train of thought takes precedence over everything else in importance. A train of thought by which societal organization as a whole can find a more accurate context for sustainability and efficiency on a scale never before seen, through an active recognition and application of the scientific method. Focus. TZM's broad actions could be summarized as to diagnose, educate, and create. Diagnose. Diagnosis is the identification of the nature and cause of anything. To properly diagnose the causal condition of the vast social and ecological problems common to modern culture is not merely to complain about them or criticize the actions of people or particular institutions, as is frequent today. A true diagnosis must seek out the lowest causal denominator possible and work at that level for resolution. The central problem is that there is often what could be called a truncated frame of reference where short-sighted misdiagnosis of given consequences persist. For instance, the traditional established solution to the reformation of human behavior for many so-called criminal acts is often punitive incarceration Yet this says nothing about the deeper motivation of the criminal and why their psychology led to such acts to begin with. At that level, such a resolution becomes more complex and reliant upon the synergistic relationship of their physical and cultural culmination over time. This is no different than when a person dies of cancer, as it isn't really the cancer that kills them in the literal sense, as the cancer itself is the product of other forces. Educate. As an educational movement that operates under the assumption that knowledge is the most powerful tool we have to create lasting, relevant social change in the global community, there is hence nothing more critical than the quality of one's personal education and their ability to communicate such ideas effectively and constructively to others. TZM is not about following a rigid text of static ideas. Such confined, narrow associations are typical of religious and political cults not the recognition of emergence that underscores the anti-establishment nature of TZM. TZM does not impose in this sense. Rather, it works to make an open-ended train of thought become realized by the individual, hopefully empowering their independent ability to understand its relevance on their own terms, at their own pace. Furthermore, education is not only an imperative for those unfamiliar with this train of thought, and the application set related, but also for those who already subscribe to it, just as there is no utopia, there is no final state of understanding. Create. While certainly related to the need to adjust human values through education, so the world's people understand the need for such social changes, TZM also works to consider how a new social system based on optimum economic efficiency would appear and operate in detail, given our current state of technical ability. Programs such as the Global Redesign Institute, which is a digital think tank that works to express how the core societal infrastructure could unfold based on our current state of technology, working to combine that technical capacity with the scientific trait of thought so as to calculate the most efficient technical infrastructure possible for any given region of the world is one example. It is worth briefly noting that TZM's advocated governance approach, which has little semblance to the current manner of governance known today or historically, 
originates out of a multidisciplinary bridging of various proven methods for maximized optimization, unified through a counterbalancing systems approach that is designed to be as adaptive as possible to new emerging improvements over time. As will be discussed at length, the only possible reference that could be considered most complete at any given time is one that takes into account the largest interacting observations system tangibly relevant. This is the nature of the cause and effect synergy that underscores the technical basis for a truly sustainable economy. Natural Law Resource-Based Economy Today, various terms exist to express the general logical basis for a more scientifically oriented social system in different circles, including the titles resource-based economy or natural law economy. While these titles are historically referential and somewhat arbitrary overall, the title natural law resource-based economy or NLRBE will be utilized here since it has the most concrete semantic basis. A natural law resource-based economy is defined as an adaptive socioeconomic system actively derived from direct physical reference to the governing scientific laws of nature. Overall, the observation is that through the use of socially targeted research and tested understandings in science and technology, we are now able to logically arrive at societal approaches which could be profoundly more effective in meeting the needs of the human population. We are now able to dramatically increase public health, better preserve the habitat, create a general material abundance, while also strategically reduce or eliminate many common social problems present today which are sadly considered inalterable by many due to their cultural persistence. Train of thought. Many figures or groups have worked to create temporally advanced technological applications working to apply current possibilities to this train of thought in order to enable new efficiencies and a problem solving, such as Jacques Fresco's city systems or R. Buckminster Fuller's Dymaxion House. Yet as obviously important as this applied engineering is, it is still critical to remember that all specific technological applications can only be transient when the evolution of scientific knowledge and its emerging technological applications are taken into account. In other words, all current applications of technology tend to become obsolete over time. Therefore, what is left can only be a train of thought with respect to the underlying causal scientific principles. TZM is hence loyal to this train of thought, not figures, institutions, or temporal technological advancements. Rather than follow a person or design, TZM follows this self-generating premise of understanding and it hence operates in a non-centralized holographic manner with this train of thought as the origin of influence for action. Superstition to science. A notable pattern worth mentioning is how the evolution of mankind's understanding of itself and its habitat also continues to expand away from older ideas and perspectives which are no longer supported due to the constant introduction of new schema-altering information. A worthy notion to note here is superstition. In many circumstances, superstition can be viewed as a category of belief that once appeared to be adequately supported by experience, perception, but can no longer be held as viable due to new conflicting data. For example, while traditional religious thought might seem increasingly implausible to more people today than ever in the West due to the rapid growth in information and general literacy, the roots of religious thought can be traced to periods where humans could justify the validity and accuracy of such beliefs given the limited understanding they had of their environment in those early times. This pattern is apparent in all areas of understanding, including modern academia. Even so-called scientific conclusions that again with the advent of new information and updated tests often cannot be held as valid anymore are still commonly defended due to their mere inclusion in the current cultural tradition. Such established institutions as they could be called often wish to maintain permanence due to reasons of ego, power, 
market income, or general psychological comfort. This problem is in many ways at the core of our social paralysis, so it is important to recognize this pattern of transition and realize how critical being vulnerable really is when it comes to belief systems, not to mention come to, coming to terms with the rather dangerous phenomenon of established institutions, which are culturally programmed and reinforced to seek self-preservation rather than evolve and change. Tradition to Emergence The perceptual clash between our cultural traditions and our ever-growing database of emergent knowledge is at the core of what defines the zeitgeist as we know it, and a long-term review of history shows a slow grind out of superstitious cultural traditions and assumptions of reality as they heed to our newly realized benchmark of emergent scientific causality. This is what TZM represents in its broadest philosophical context, a movement of the cultural zeitgeist itself into new, verifiable, and more optimized understandings and applications. Hence, while society certainly has witnessed vast and accelerating changes in different areas of awareness and practice, such as with our vast material technology today, it appears our social system is still long behind. Political persuasion, market economics, labor for income, perpetual inequality, nation states, legal assumptions, and many other staples of our current social order continue to be largely accepted as normality by the current culture, with little more than their persistence through time as evidence of their value and empirical permanence. It is in this context that TZM finds its most broad imperative, changing the social system. Again, there are many problem-solving technical possibilities for personal and social progress today that continue to go unnoticed or misunderstood. The ending of war, the resolution of poverty, the creation of a material abundance unseen in history to meet human needs, the removal of most crime as we know it, the empowerment of true personal freedom through the removal of pointless and or monotonous labor, and the resolution of many environmental threats are but a few of the calculated possibilities we have when we take our technical reality into account. However, again, these possibilities are not only largely unrecognized, they are also literally restricted by the current social order, for the implementation of such problem-solving efficiency and prosperity stands in direct opposition to the very mechanics of how our current social system is operating at the core level. Therefore, until the socioeconomic tradition and its resulting social values are challenged and updated to present-day understandings, until the majority of the human population understands the basic underlying train of thought technically needed to support human sustainability and public health, as derived from the rigor of objective scientific investigation and validation, until much of the baggage of prior false assumptions, superstition, divisive loyalties, and other socially unsustainable conflict-generating cultural hindrances are overcome. All the life-improving and problem-solving possibilities we now have at hand will remain largely dormant. The real revolution is the revolution of values. Human society appears centuries behind in the way it operates and hence what it values. If we wish to progress and solve the mounting problems at hand, and in effect reverse what is an accelerating decline of our civilization. In many ways, we need to change the way we think about ourselves, and hence the world we inhabit. The Zeitgeist Movement's central task is to work to bring this value shift to light, unifying the human family with the basic perspective that we all share this small planet and we are all bound by the same natural order laws as realized by the method of science. This common ground understanding extends much farther than many have understood in the past. The symbiosis of the human species and the synergistic relationship of our place in the physical world confirm that we are not separate entities in any respect. The new societal awakening must show a working social model that is arrived at from this inherent logic if we expect to survive and prosper in the long term. We can align or we can suffer. It is up to us.